Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Dear me, how bad is it? How bad has it been today? Well, we knew the games were all called off yesterday. Um, so we decided to, uh, just in case, managed to put a friendly on. But we knew, we deep down, the reason we done that, the reason we done it is because we had a photo shoot with our sponsor. And we'll talk in detail about him very, very shortly indeed. Anyway, to cap it all, obviously we didn't expect the snow to come down because every weather warning, the Met Office, everything I checked everywhere yesterday, and all it said was showers, uh, 4 degrees. So, obviously you think, well that's okay. You know, it might be cold. If it's cold, we'll make sure that they're wrapped up well, put jumpers on underneath them and see how we go. We managed to get another team. Um, thanks very much for that as well, who are going to play us. Um, but unfortunately, the weather did turn gangster and we just... Oh, and Colin, who was going to referee it for us, we didn't bother to ask a referee just in case it was called off, um, which it was because we went there, we had a look, and there was no way we were putting the kids through that. It was bad enough putting them through a photo session with the sponsors, and they were freezing there, but you know what? Hats off to the kids, and there was little surprises along the way for them, they didn't know. They got a little envelope each, they got a nice selection box each, and obviously they were going to Mackey's after that one as well, and believe me, Mackey's warmed them up. But a massive, massive thank you to our sponsor, now you may have seen my story yesterday, I put it on social media and far too often we see clubs, teams going out, getting the kit sponsor and that's it. And the next thing they're searching for another sponsor and another sponsor and another sponsor. And that sponsor, in my opinion, gets forgotten about it. Now I've been in grassroots football for over 40 years and I've seen that and every time that I've had a sponsor, I've made sure that we look after that sponsor. And I am going to give them as much publicity as possible because we see many teams, clubs out there, with nothing without our sponsors. Thanks very much. And they give a little bit of a mention. And it's only a kiss, but we bombard them. And I keep in touch with my sponsor, let them know how we're doing, what we're doing, where we're going to, what we plan. And do you know what? He's been absolutely over the moon with everything that we've done. And it's not because we're winning games. It's because... But advertising his kit that he bought us and in turn of that when I was talking to him the other day that I wanted to pick, bring him up after our game if the game was on uh, not the friendly this is the league who cancelled them yesterday correct decision of course well done to the North Bill JFL I'm not too sure about the Wantland care tale but it does look very very doubtful for tomorrow looking at the weather forecast then again it was all wrong today they're stating that it's going to be even worse tomorrow so I wouldn't think uh, knowing Dave that he'd put the kids through that he would just if the councils haven't called them off then it's entirely up to the league or to the venue the hubs themselves and I know the grass pitches guaranteed they'll be off because they would be well waterlogged I wouldn't thought any games have gone ahead today World Cup day as well and we go into that very shortly uh, but once again I'd just like to mention the sponsor that we have and obviously he's going to, this is what he's promised me. He turned around when he told him that I was going to bring the kids up for a photo shoot outside his warehouse. He was over the moon. He couldn't thank me enough because we wanted to give him the publicity that he deserves. Now, before you all start going, hurry up, I'll give us the sponsor, we'll get in touch with ourselves. I'm, I'm afraid we did do that last year. We did get a few teams sponsored um, off him. And this time, um, he has turned around and said, do you know what, I think we'd love you as our main sponsor. So rather than me putting it out to every other team, you could just be wasting your time because John himself will come through myself um, from Don't Cross the Line. And he looks like he's going to be our club sponsor. We're looking to have another team next year going into under sevens as our lads move up to under eights. He wants to see us build the club and my dream was always to develop the club and the way I want to do that is move them up an age group as they come along, bring in new kids and build it like that. We cannot adopt other teams even though we do have a girls team, that's a different story. They play in a futsal league in Walton, in Warrington, not Walton, I'm going to have a photo shoot 
maybe just after Christmas because it's probably a little bit too much to get together now and with the change in the weather. Um, so we want to get them all together and they're doing really well, both teams, and I think it'd be absolutely fantastic. So boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, you know, something like that. And I think it'd be, I'd, I'd be over the moon just to see that. So I'm going to be in touch with Simon, see if you can bring them down for another one. I have the two girls, two sets of girls in the photo shoes. And we look forward to that as well, bringing the club together. And that's the way we want to build the club. Start slowly but surely. Now, I've just said we have a girls team in the futsal league in Warrington. And we just want to know, you know, is it worth as well? No disrespect towards the girls, they're building more girls as well. But I'll have a chat with Simon on that one because we want to develop this club, don't cross the line, into something that's unique, something that's different, something that brings the kids together. And I'm not saying every other club doesn't do the best they can to help the kids in their club or teams. It's just that I've always had this dream, this plan, and I want to take Don't Cross the Line forward in the work that we do on and off the field of play, which is to respect the referees, respect the referees, and make sure that no one makes makes them leave the game if that makes sense because our referees are too important they're a major part of grassroots football they shouldn't be getting the verbal abuse or the aggressive behavior towards them that they are getting and i can honestly say going out there when we're out there nothing really happens if you're there it doesn't and i've got a million witnesses and i was talking to Cole fulton the other day um and he was going to be our referee as i say just today just to to save the club money and the, the other team money as well. Um, but obviously, we we didn't want to put the kids through that. We, no, no way. And we had to tell Colt. And he was telling me while we were on the phone arranging this, that through me, through Don't Cross the Line, and talking to me many, many years ago, and Colt will come on and tell you all about this, that he used to be nasty himself towards a referee. He used to argue. He used to question every decision that they made. And if he does this time, it's one of those hands up and say, sorry ref, excellent, and he gives the referee praise. And he was telling me one of, one of the referees went up to me the other day and turned around and said, my God, how you have changed from the touchline, on the touchline, on the sideline towards the referees. And Col agreed and he thanked me for helping him to do that and changing his ways. And he told me that on the phone. And it is touching, really, that you know that you're making a difference not just with the kids, but you are making a difference with the adults in grassroots football and also helping the referees to stay within the game and attracting more and new referees towards it. And I always make time and an effort to go out and see the young referees and talk to them and explain who I am, what I've been doing and basically to say, look, don't worry, go on deaf ears, you start getting verbal abuse or aggressive behaviour from the managers, from the coaches, from spectators, from the parents, go on deaf ears because they tend to want an argument. And if you start fighting back, only being young, experienced referees have been handling that for many, many years, they are okay, and I can bring them in, they'll talk about that as well. They are okay, but you, you have to give the referee a little bit of encouragement, the young referees, a little bit of encouragement. And I hope to get a few young referees in as well to talk about the expectations of what they want to achieve and what they have been achieving within grassroots football as a new referee so we do have one or two of them who are prepared to come in they have the confidence and we'll talk about their refereeing up to now and how they find the spectators the sidelines and the kids on the field of play and i don't think it's the kids as much as the problem you can handle the kids and if a referee young referee explains to the child exactly why they get the free kick what they're doing how to calm themselves down it goes a long long way and it's noted by many many in grassroots football a lot of good people in grassroots football the kids will acknowledge that they love that they like to see a referee talk to the kids and explain to the kids what it's all about and why they give that decision and why they disallow the goal give a penalty obviously sometimes it, it makes sense to know you don't have to explain they just do it and the, the kids themselves will know exactly what's going on. But if they do that right the way through their career, then honestly, to become a top, top referee. And you can see that and people will note that. And we've got quite a few young referees out there as well. 
And as I say, I want to get them in there and we want to hear their expectations and find out what their goal is, what their dream is. Are they going to be prepared, be prepared to stay in, go to the next level and carry on and try and make it to the very, very top. And obviously we wish them all the very best to do that. We know there's many referees out there just do that for pocket money. Nothing wrong with that. They've taken the time to go and do the course. So well done to all referees week in, week out. And I'm sure you'll all be screaming, holding your head in your hands, thinking, oh, I hope these games are till, off till after Christmas because I could do with the money for Christmas. And they could as well. We know that. But let's just hope we get more games in next weekend. See what the weather brings. But it's not very good at the moment so let's see if many leagues will cancel their games from tomorrow when they see the weather fingers crossed it's just a little bit breezy cold and the kids can handle that and we can just get on just to get some decent games in just before the break up before christmas okay we were talking about sponsors and how good they are and what they do without them we couldn't have many teams within football could we because sponsors are a massive massive thing in grassroots football um, we were lucky enough to touch for two sponsors and we we're lucky enough to have other sponsors getting in touch with us and asking us can they get involved in certain things yes you can we i think the sponsors know as well that don't cross the line has um with the intellectual property office copyrighted no ref no game ref spec'd don't cross the line we're all there and we have been using that for many many years indeed and it's making a difference within grassroots football now Aintree Sofas is our sponsor and it's across the road from where the kids play Saturday and Sunday and you know to sponsor the kits and want to buy them another kit straight away two kits in a season and then emphasize get yourself a coat as well now uh, get the coaches a coat we want to look after you because it is getting cold and also saying We'll sort it out next season as well with another kit because the kids will be getting bigger. And also, we'd like to buy all the kids a pair of boots as well. Wow, what a sponsor. And he said, ring me up, anything you need, and no doubt we'll sort that. Now, that is a sponsor and a half. And I think everyone out there will agree with me. You've got to look after your sponsor. You don't just get a kit and say, that's it now, till the end of the season. There's my sponsor, we're giving them advertising, people are looking at it. You've got to promote it, you've got to look towards that sponsor because many sponsors don't get back involved for that simple reason. And I ring people up and they say, oh, we sponsored so many and they've disappeared. That's it now, you, you know, the kit's gone and it, it, it ends up either in the bin and no one else wants to use it because it's got a sponsor's name on and people don't agree with my what I do and I was good enough to sponsor the team and they just forgot about me and I won't be sponsoring that team again and that's what you hear of many sponsors so that's why I think we should all congregate together and make sure that we do look after our sponsors now I'd love to hear your story what publicity you give your sponsor I'd love to hear of your sponsor because we can give them a mention and thank them on your behalf for also giving a lot back into grassroots football to the kids because we know the times are hard and even if a sponsor makes a little bit of money and they're going out and buying you a kit or coats, warm coats, whatever they buy you, whatever you put their name on, without them you couldn't run a team to be honest because it's asking more and more money off the parents and we can keep that down. What we try to do, what we aim to do, we will do. So the kids had a ball today um, and we were out at the photo shoot for 18 sofas, you'll see them on social media, we're going to be posting them. We're going to get a nice frame picture for our sponsors so we can put up in the warehouse as well and let people see that he is part of Liverpool himself. Now, whatever you are, obviously, I'm sure you've got good sponsors out there. We'd love to hear from your mouth at don'texttheline.com. You can praise your sponsor through us. You know, it's a great thing to have a sponsor. And if you want to, add me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites as well. Get me a message. Join us with the Respect campaign. Join us with Don't Cross the Line. Join us with No Ref, No Game. Um, I know the FAI have been using it, so hopefully I'll be in talks with them um, to try and work something out and see what their future is with No Ref, No Game. But they've supported Don't Cross the Line for many years, so we're going to sit down and talk, even if I had to go over to Dublin or they had to come over 
to me and have a little sit down and a chat regarding the logo, regarding the name, because I noticed that they wanted to take it into Europe. Well, let's see how things go. Um, it is copyrighted over in the UK by ourselves, so we're trying to make a difference. And that's all we want to do, to keep our referees within the game. And if anyone saw or watches our referees from the PGM or well, they'll also be wearing our T-shirts. You'll see no ref, no game on their sleeves. You would have seen them last season. You would have seen the shirts on the BBC. They advertise them and you'll see them all over social media through ourselves because we will put them forward as much as we possibly can because we want our 20th anniversary, which is next season, to, to, be, to be something special and we want to promote that well also. And we're looking to do a respect tournament. Um, obviously it'll become a um, VIP tournament because it'll be by invitation only because we know it'd be absolutely heathen if we just put teams in left, right and centre. And we want to bring teams in from elsewhere as well, like to Preston, Chester, Wales, which we've had contact with, Ireland, if we possibly can, London. Honestly, we just want to bring teams in for the weekend that will be something special. And we have had already interest with the media who want to make themselves do some filming uh, for our Respect Awareness weekend for next season. And thank you to Mike Riley who's already committed, the PFA have already committed, and I'm sure the FA will already commit as well with their support, and Liverpool and Everton will also do it. So we just need a marketing tool, someone who's extra special, to get in touch with all the Football League, they're going to be on board as well by the way, EFL, they're on board. We just need as many people to get on board and promote what we do, our campaign, to make sure that we keep our referees within the game. We don't want to chase them away, we need them, they're extra special, they're part of the grassroots football family and they're part of us because without them there is no game, look at them. And what we mean by that, you get a manager on a pitch, it's not the same as that referee within uniform. Kids are in uniform, they're in their kids, and then you get one of our managers coming in, not their fault, they've been asked to do the, the game, and they're in track suits and they're part of the other team, they don't want to look as if they're part of the other team. It's hard to referee, I've been there myself, done it, when we've had a team, and the kids, your own team, expect more decisions on their side. You've got to be impartial, it's hard to do. Yes, we can say the manager, the coach, will do a half each, but it's not the same, and everyone will welcome that referee if they have to do a game, I assure you. So the referee is extra special. Let's keep them in the game. Let's hope we get some games on tomorrow. Fingers crossed we do, but the weather is not looking very good. And we can always finish, also finish on a high with England. I'm not really, I saw the games honestly last night, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Brazil going out, Argentina and Holland and all the Netherlands. That was a some game, you know, but the Netherlands, I thought, gave too much respect. Once they get back into that game, they should have gone at them because I thought they had Argentina on the ropes, but they sat back in my eyes to play for the penalties, thinking, yes, we've got them, they should have gone all out, but they let Argentina come at them, and when the penalties were taken, you see a lot of fluffs on our own, very own Virgil, he missed the first pen. If he'd have put it away, maybe a different story, but... Unfortunately, he's coming home now earlier. He can have his rest and be ready for Liverpool Football Club and wait another four years, no doubt. But what's our hopes for tonight? Has it sunk into me yet? I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not overexcited. And I do believe France are going to give us a real tough game. Everyone's talking about one player, Mbappe. They're not talking about our England players. We need to keep him out of the game. And if you've got him out of the game and prevent all these passes, then you've you've done some, you've noted something within the performance of the England team. He's out the game and it opens the way for our strike force to hit back. But they must be worried about ourselves. Now I'm thinking it is gonna go the whole hog. I'm thinking it's gonna go to penalties and I'm also thinking it could be a loss towards us because I'm not overconfident. As I said, this is our toughest game in the competition, these are the holders, they're playing well, and I just think it could be a possible 2-1 to France. So I've got two there that I'm 
I'm not too sure about. I know you'll all be hoping that England go through. Brilliant if they go through. Then I might just get myself warmed up and think, wow, this is the World Cup. Now the teams are all making a difference. Now it really is starting to get interested. And the underdogs have all been winning, haven't they? So that means that we've got a chance as well. Because surely we are part of those underdogs now who are all going through Croatia. Wow, what a performance. Penalties. And they really battled. Now if England can take it and adopt that situation up there and play good football, then I will lift myself to really get behind them. Because as I say, I, it's one of those I just can't get into at the moment. And I don't know why I really really don't I think the World Cup the politics behind it has really put me off um, we couldn't we weren't allowed to watch the football and admire the teams everything that was happening was happening for a reason then you got protesters trying to get on football pitches it's not right and I know it happens over here in different competitions but this is the World Cup and everything should have been sorted out and just what was the comments many pundits and I don't like to see Politics in world, in football, it's taken over the World Cup and is it a new difference? I'm not too sure. Anyway, I do hope that England go through and then we can go from there and maybe, just maybe, I'll be on a high and I'll start shouting, come on England, a little bit more often. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in to the Grassroots Show. Hope you liked myself and Jaden last night. Jaden's a superstar. I had three apologies. Jaden got through with myself, even though I had done most of the talking. But Jaden is a good lad, I tell you, when it comes to interviews with our celebrity. And apologies from the other three. Um, I just think it was the cold weather. They knew what was coming. And today was a pretty cold, cold day. Let's just hope tomorrow is a bit different. From myself, Marlene, all the team here, the Grassroots Show, Don't Cross the Line, Ref Spec Programme, Kids Voice Box, Hearts of Gold, what more could I say? No ref, no game. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, talking about grassroots football and an England win. Good night, God bless.